Welcome in to Drew Silly Diamond for Saturday, November 2nd, 2024, the college football edition coming your way. Going to try to make it through five games here, guys. Got a packed show for you. So let me know in the comments below where you agree, where you disagree. All is welcome. Your picks for Saturday in college football, Sunday NFL, all is welcome, guys, in the comments below. It does help out the algorithm. Looking to grow the show. Smash that like button if you're liking the content. We got one early kick. Two afternoon kicks and two night kicks going to try to work through here. So let's get after it. 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 noon Eastern, Syracuse, New York, 54 being the total. It's Virginia Tech at Syracuse and the Hokies laying four on the highway. Guys, this is a pretty good ACC matchup here. I actually like Virginia Tech in this one. I really do. Five and three on the season. They've won three straight. They've covered four straight, all going all the way back to uh, that Miami game. They really could have won it outright. Their defensive front, 10 sacks the last three games. And the matchup on the field here, you might remember that, what, Thursday night against Pitt for the Syracuse Orange. Uh, their quarterback, Kyle McCord, he went 35 of 64. He looked like a deer in headlights against better defensive fronts. I think he struggles. He threw five interceptions in that game. Now, I know a lot of people out there like in Syracuse and in, in kind of the bounce back mode being at home with extra preparation time. But I almost think it kind of works into that trendy dog pick. A lot of people like in Syracuse here. I, I don't think it happens, though. I think it's more about the bat, the matchup here, guys. And Virginia Tech's riding under the radar. They've been cashing tickets. Um, again, Syracuse kind of struggling up front against the better defensive fronts. I think Virginia Tech takes this game in the trenches. I think they have the more talented kind of defensive front to get after Kyle McCord. So it's minus four flat here. And interesting to see, you know, a lot of people betting Syracuse here, the ticket, the money. But that number's sticking on four. I think there's a reason why. Let's go Virginia Tech, minus four over Syracuse. Moving down the list here, 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific on ABC, the world's largest outdoor cocktail party. It's Florida and Georgia. Georgia Bulldogs, minus 14 in the hook or minus 15 as the home favorite. 52 being the total. This is in Jacksonville, Florida. Quote unquote neutral site game here where the Jaguars play their home games. Guys, I, I like I like Florida plus the points. I really do. I mean, if if, if you've been following along, um, I, I do have a season win total ticket on the Florida Gators over five and a half. This would go a long way if they could win outright, but they are catching more than two touchdowns in this one. And a couple reasons why I like them. One, they're playing better football. I mean, not a lot of people are talking about it, but the Gators have covered four straight games. And they've done it by almost 60 against the spread points, meaning they're being underpriced by the odds makers. And you flip it on its script with the Georgia Bulldogs. Yes, six and one straight up. Yes, they might be the most talented team in the country. They might have been the most talented team in the country last year as well. But the fact is, against the number, they're just two and five ATS. And they're flat out not covering numbers. They really aren't. When you look at it, they're 0 and five, their last five trips as the favorite. And they're 2-7 and seven ATS as a favorite, dating back to last season. Um, we talked about this one on the college football opening line report. And I brought up the fact that Kirby Smart, you know, he comes from that Nick Saban coaching tree, longtime uh, Saban assistant there at Alabama as his defensive coordinator. And he's out for having the more talented team winning the football game, not necessarily covering the number. And Florida obviously is covering numbers. And they got their quarterback, DJ Lagway. Uh, talk about, you know, change. He's an explosive player. He really is. He can make plays with his feet. Now, granted, he's a young kid, might make mistakes, but Graham Mertz is out. He's taking snaps and they're covering numbers. They, they've they hit more big plays. I mean, they had five passes of 40 or more yards against Kentucky. That Kentucky defense has been a good one most of this season. So, hey, if they can hit some big plays here, that back door might be open as well. We can get them as high as 15 here Friday afternoon. Let's go with the Florida Gators as the Barking Dog plus 15 against the Georgia Bulldogs in the world's largest outdoor cocktail party. Moving down the list here, 415 Eastern, 115 Pacific in Starkville, Mississippi. It's Mississippi State hosting UMass. This one on SEC Network, 60 being the total. The Bulldogs of Mississippi State minus 18 in the hook. Look, anytime a team is one in seven on the season, 
and they're laying 18 and a half, it catches my eye. Like, what's going on here? It, it, this team is 0-5 in the SEC, talking about Mississippi State, but they've covered three of their last four games. Now, granted, Arkansas got after them and kind of blew them out, but before that, Mississippi State's starting to score some points, and the, they're playing better football overall, and they're up against UMass here, which – UMass is is not a very good they, – they haven't really been a good football program for quite some time, really ever since stepping up to Division I uh, FBS-level football. The only SEC team they played this season was Missouri. They lost that game 45-3, to and they were at home. Yeah, that was kind of a weird situation. This is a little bit back to normal going on the road here. Now, Mississippi State, they played Arkansas, Texas A&M, Georgia – Texas and Florida, their last five games. Now they're going to play UMass. This is a huge drop in talent level, guys. Um, and, and really the, the reason why I like this is, yes, because of the talent drop. Yes, because one in seven, lane 18 and a half, that kind of catches my attention. But really the storyline here is their head coach, Jeff Levy, he's in his first year in Starkville. And as an offensive coordinator, his last three stops since 2019, he was in Oklahoma, Ole Miss, and UCF. And he was number one in the nation in 50-plus point games as the OC, meaning he'll look to run up the score when given the opportunity. And Mississippi State, playing in the SEC, really doesn't have this opportunity left. So I know he's from offensive coordinator to now the head coach. I think that actually gives him more reins to run up the score when given the opportunity. I think this is his opportunity. The only time Mississippi State has been favored by more than two touchdowns, it was their first game of the season against Eastern Kentucky. They won the game 56-7. to I think this could be something close to that, guys. I think this is blowout city. Mississippi State minus 18.5 over UMass. Two games left. we got the night slate up next, 8 p.m. Eastern on ESPN2. A good one here in Waco, Texas. It's TCU and Baylor in a Lone Star State battle. Guys, we got um, Baylor minus three, 63 in the hook being the total. Does look like a blackout in Baylor, so uh, should be a pretty good atmosphere here. And one thing I've noticed, and I, I, I lost personally betting against Baylor on Texas Tech, I think it was two weeks ago. This Baylor team is pretty good. I think they're even better than their record says they are. Their quarterback, Sawyer Robinson, he has nine touchdowns in the last two weeks. Baylor scored 97 points their last two games. So they're starting to play really good offensive football. And TCU, yes, they, they came from behind against Texas Tech. But when you look at their schedule, they played Utah, Houston, Kansas. Um, there's not really good quarterback play with those, with those three teams before that. And when they played SMU, who does have a good offense, they let up 66 points. Now, granted, that was a wild kind of back and forth game. Overall, guys, Baylor just ran for 345 yards. Um, they're off of their first Big 12 home win in two years. I think they get this. Minus three flat. I think it's a little bit short. I think Baylor's the better team. I think they're better in the trenches. Let's go Baylor. Minus three at home over TCU. We got one game left. And uh, reminder, if you could comment uh, below, it does help out the algorithm. Anything is welcome. Where you agree, where you disagree. Uh, we are we, we do have the recap. I know you guys are, are on me for the recap. We went um, one and one on Wednesday, minus 0.1 units. We went two and oh on Thursday, sweep of the board, college football and NFL. Now, Friday's games have not finished. So I uh, do want to be transparent with that. I don't know what the Friday recap is, but overall going into Thursday, the last five plus weeks, guys, Drew Staley Diamond, 46 and 31. That's 60 percent. Given out for free here on the Wager Talk YouTube channel, 46 and 31 over the last five plus weeks, plus 11.7 units. So if you're betting 100 bucks a game, you're up, uh, what, $1,170. That's including big. You know, in baseball, if we if we laid minus 140, that's counted in. But uh, 60%, uh, not a bad run here. So, uh, hey, if you could help me out, smash that like button. If you're following along, if you're profiting, and uh, comment below, guys. As always, premium picks available. Wagertalk.com, experts page, Drew Martin. You can get the rest of the calendar year. Uh, huge discount there. Every play, college football, NFL. we got college basketball tipping off as well. So uh, all that up and available. Drew Martin, experts page, wagertalk.com. 
All right, 8 p.m. Eastern time on ACC Network. It is Pitt and SMU, a real sleeper matchup in the ACC. I can't wait for this one. I'll definitely be watching uh, each and every play of this. Multiple TVs going. 59 being the total. SMU minus 7. There was minus 8 out there, but now it's just 7 and a hook as the home favorite. SMU comes in 7-1 and one on the season, Pitt 7-0. and oh. Pitt is also 6-1 and one ATS, SMU not bad themselves, 5-3 and three against the spread. Uh, Eli Holstein versus Jennings, the quarterback matchup here. Now, both quarterbacks a little bit banged up, but I, the, the latest that I've read, both quarterbacks will actually, will actually play. Jennings returned against Duke, um, and Pitt's head coach, Pat Narduzzi, mentioned Holstein should be fine. Pat Narduzzi, the head coach for Pitt, is 10-2 and two off of a bye week. Now, granted, it's not a bye week, but like we talked with Syracuse, uh, there is extra preparation time. They played last Thursday, so I like that with certain coaches getting extra preparation time and then having good results. Overall, guys, I think this Pitt defensive line is going to get after SMU. SMU is a good team. They can score a lot of points when given the opportunity to do so. But against a really good defensive front here, I'm not so sure they're going to be able to. They got a lot of talent on the outside, but is the quarterback going to have enough time to do so? This pit defense is for real, guys. I think they're going to go on the road here, catching more than a touchdown. Yeah, let, let, let's jump on the Pitt Panthers. SMU, remember, went to overtime with Duke just last week, turned the ball over a bunch. So now going up against an even better defense in Pitt. Let's go with the underdog, as high as plus seven in the hook. You do get that hook on the all-important number of seven. So we're on Pitt, plus seven and a half over SMU. We're on Baylor, minus three over TCU, Mississippi State. One in seven, laying 18 and a half. Yeah, somebody knows something. We're jumping on the Bulldogs of Mississippi State for Jeff Levy to run it up on UMass. World's largest outdoor cocktail party. We are on the underdog, Florida Gators, plus 15 against the Georgia Bulldogs. And to lead us off here, kicking early, it's Virginia Tech, minus four over Syracuse. That's going to do it for the Saturday show, guys. Like always, thanks thanks for tuning in. If you could smash that like button, comment below, that does help. We'll be back on Sunday for the NFL show, so come back and join us. Until then, cash those tickets. Enjoy your weekend. Thanks for tuning in.